that God has already given us. We study that message on Tuesday night, and we study that message on Saturday afternoon, and we study that message, the Spirit of Prophecy, on Wednesday afternoon. There's only a handful of us on Wednesday afternoon. We have the best studies on Wednesday afternoon. Amen. We have the best studies on Tuesday night. I don't know which one's better. They're both good studies. Saturday afternoon we study. But it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, I'll ask you again. If God said, it says, the two men used mightily by God at Minneapolis and in the decade that followed, Wagner and Jones became the special point of attack of the, of the great enemy of God and man. Satan is desperate. He, don't wanna, he wants to hurt God, and the only way he can hurt God is to hurt his children. It is quite possible that elders Jones and Wagner may, may be overthrown. i got to back up. No, I'm not backing up. They may be overthrown by the temptations of the enemy. I mean, we've heard, we've all heard this. Wagner and Jones left the church. But if they should be, if they're overcome, this would not prove that they had no message from God. Or that the work that they had done was all a mistake. But should this happen, how many would take the position and enter, enter into a fatal delusion because they are not under the control of the Spirit of God. I know that this is the very position, position many would take if these men were to fall. And I pray that these men, upon whom God has laid the burden of solemn work, may be able to give the trumpet a certain sound and honor God at every step. And that their path at every step may grow brighter and brighter until the close of time. <clears throat> the message of righteousness by faith has somehow been missed. We missed it. Let's not miss it again. We have spent a hunt over 175 years since Jesus moved from the holy place to the most holy place. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, go to the Great Controversy, read chapters 23 and 24. If we don't get the message, we won't go home. If we get the message, the work can be finished very quickly. What is the work of God? <clears throat> and Jesus answered them and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom He sent. We've got to believe what Jesus said. The works of God, and that's, I'm going to close with this, you were finished from the foundation of the world. That's perplexing. The power of God said that the works were finished. God said in His power that the works were finished from this foundation of the world. So how are we going to do God's work? We've got to have His power. Because if we're doing it in our power, God cannot put His signature on our work. God can only put His signature on His work. And that's where I'll close. Our closing song is number 608. Let us stand.
In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But in verse 13, it tells you who does the work. It says, For God does the work. God is the one that works in you to live, to do your will, to do His will. So allow God, invite God in. In uh, Revelation 3.21, it says He's knocking on the door of your heart. And that's everyone's heart. He wants to come in. He wants to do the work. Allow Him to do the work in you. That we can go on. The spirit of spirit prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your creative power. We thank you for your redemptive power that you have redeemed us. And one day, Father, we look forward to you restoring us and for Jesus to come back home, to take us home, to your home, that we would be with you forever. We thank you and we praise you because you are so worthy of our thanks and praise and glory and honor is yours. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.